Hey everyone, and welcome to 1.21 Gigawatts. This is our weekly trailer talk, where we talk about some of this week's biggest movie trailers, and at the end of the show, we'll pick our favourite of the week. So that's a simple premise. It is. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's probably the quickest intro you have for some of these shows. It probably is. Did I introduce us? I, can't, I feel like I didn't. No, I don't think you didn't do that. No. Okay, I'm Peter, that's Connor. There you go. That's it done. Done. Let's go. Quick. Smooth. Right, excellent. So yeah, we got we got six trailers to talk about this week. It makes a big difference from the seventeen that last week had. Uh, almost to the point where I'm like, you couldn't have spread out those seventeen to the the week before and the week after a little bit because they were both yeah. a bit quieter. But whatever, whatever. Uh, so first up, uh, probably the biggest profile one of the week uh, was Dumbo, the Tim Burton live action Dumbo movie coming from Disney. Uh, it is worth mentioning. I cannot stand Tim Burton, <laughs> so. That's my bias. Get into this trailer. I'm I'm hit or miss. Some of his films I really like. Others I'm like, you know what? I, I'm I'm good. Hmm. How did you feel about this? I'm I'm kind of intrigued. I mean, there's not too much going on. This is mostly a tone trailer. Um, but I think it looks pretty solid so far. Yeah, I have no attachment to Dumbo as well. I, mean, I don't dislike Dumbo, but I have no attachment to it. Um, I think I saw it when I was really young, but I don't remember. Like, I'll be I honest. Like Watching this trailer, there was a moment halfway through where I went, oh yes, right, he flies. Like, you know, I'd forgotten that. I'd forgotten that was Dumbo's thing. <laughs> okay. No, I, I, I've i not seen Dumbo a, a lot in recent years. It's it's when I watched it a few times as a kid. I remember, of course, the, the crows and you know, the, the pink elephant sequence, which might be trippy as balls in this movie. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. Uh, so again, I have not got a huge attachment to Dumbo. I think I've got very little I can actually complain about in this trailer. There's not anything that necessarily gets me excited, though. But I don't think it's a bad. It doesn't nothing. Nothing. It looks bad by any means. I think if you care about Dumbo, you're probably excited by this because it's it's you know hitting some teases of the moments from the story. Yeah. For for me, as someone who doesn't like Tim Burton, as someone who doesn't care about Dumbo, this didn't even move my needle in any way, shape, or form. It was kind of it felt like just a little bit sappy, a little bit you know. I feel like it's got a bigger budget, but this could very easily just be like movie of the week on Disney Channel, right? No, that's fair. It has that kind of tone to it. Uh, so for me, this was a complete non, non thing. I, like I said, I don't think it really has me interested yet. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not writing it off. I feel like okay, once I get a proper trailer and get a bit more context for how the scenes are going to actually play out a bit more. Yeah. Rather than just here's some little cuts here or there. Yeah, it's, then, yeah. it looks very typical for what it is, um, and I have written it off for myself because it's Tim Burton. Therefore, I am going to avoid it like the plague. Yeah, fair enough. So that's Dumbo. Uh, I don't have any hot takes really. All I just don't like Tim Burton, and I don't care about Dumbo. It it doesn't so. even look like the most Tim Burton thing ever, other than just the the color palette, I guess. Yeah, the color palette definitely looks like Tim Burton. Um, yeah. How Tim Burton ends up being in the final result is... Yeah, the, the question is, do Disney kind of rein him in because they still want some semblance of a Disney movie? They might have done. I don't, I don't think they let him go full Willy Wonka. Yeah. All right, which yeah. I never saw, but from the clips I saw... It's not great. Yeah. It's probably the lightest of Burton's movies, though. It's definitely the most colourful. Sure... I mean, so I, it's not what I would consider the typical Bur- Tim Burton movie, right? I'd say that's kind of the the outlier in my mind. It has it has a lot of his zaniness and wackiness. Don't get me wrong, but the style I feel is 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 not his usual gothic sort of thing that he that he does a lot. Yeah, it's not his gothic thing. There's, there's something still very Tim Burtony about the whole thing, though. Again, yeah, from enough. trailers, from clips, I've never seen the movie because I decided after a certain point in my life I'm just not going to watch any more Tim Burton movies. So I've avoided most of his recent stuff. That's fair. Successfully. Uh, With that, we'll move on to Siberia, uh, which is a trailer for um, for for uh, Keanu Reeves. Uh, It's basically like you're expecting it to turn into John Wick at almost any moment, and it never does. He's just you know he's. But it feels like it's on the edge, doesn't it? Yeah, because he's in all these dangerous situations. He's 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 meant to be helping these diamond smugglers. He's he's kind of there as the expert. And he gets caught up in the uh, the turmoil and gets threatened, and there's there's you know, guns and there's action, but it's very subdued. It, it feels like a sort of like this is a low budget movie he did very quickly, you know, in between other projects yeah. that 
it doesn't really have anything going for it. It feels very sort of like uh, just just sort of generic and down downplayed. It does. It feels like it wants to be an action movie, but it doesn't have the budget to pull it off, so it's gone for more of a of a thriller instead. Yes, and it's kind of got this mixed identity because of it. Yeah, and I don't think anyone stuck out to me other than Keanu Reeves. No, not at all. Yeah, so yeah, not a whole lot to say about this one either. This, this is this is kind of a just a again a very generic trailer for what it is. Yeah, again, it's not really that bad. I'm just like, okay, this is a thing. Yeah, I mean, if they play with the, the cold color palette because they're in Siberia, so there's a lot of that going on. Yeah, I, it, it looks nice enough visually. So yeah. I'll give it that. I don't know if I, I'm not getting great things from the cinematography. I, I, it doesn't feel like to me that it's going to like look like it has a visual flair. It just doesn't look. Bad. No, that's fair. I'm I'm kind of mixed. That there are points where it's like you know there's there's some shots of like the forest and the snow that I'm like, mm. oh that was really nice as a shot, and then there are other points where it just it's all this shaky cam thing. And I'm like, why is that like that? It, it kind of just it is a bit up and down in its style. Well, it's funny that almost sounds like the uh, the, the B unit who did all the establishing shots of the the the, the forest and stuff <laughs> had a better eye for visuals than the actual director it, did. It does feel like that, yeah. That's just kind of funny, but uh, hey, uh, so that's the beer. We won't spend much more time on that. I, I think the probably the more interesting trailers for us this week out of the six or the next two, uh, yeah. for a couple of reasons. So they're both sequels. Uh, well, one's a spin-off, I suppose, but it's essentially yeah. a sequel or a prequel in this case. Uh, that is the Nun, which is the spin-off of the Conjuring movies, which has already had Annabelle and Annabelle's sequel, or sorry, which, uh, Annabelle's prequel, I should say. Yes, which thankfully I never watched either of those. Hmm. But this is the nun who was interested in The Conjuring 2, and this is her second spin-off. Well, it's second property. You know, like, obviously there was two Annabelles, but I'm not, I'm counting it kind of like, we had Annabelle, and then we've got the nun, and then we're getting yeah. the, the Crooked Man as the third kind of spin-off. Um, we'll get another one after Conjuring 3. Most probably. Whatever Conjuring 3 introduces, we'll get we'll get a yeah. spin-off. Uh, so... So, we actually, we have uh, Vera Farmiga's uh, little sister, uh, Tessia Farmiga, is in this. Uh, I I always bring this up, but when I when I saw them in like side by side, I, I assumed they were mother daughter because the, the age difference is so big. Yeah. Because you know Vera Farmiga is like a middle aged woman, and then Tess is like you know like uh, she's probably like in her mid twenties now. But when I first saw her, she was like twenty. Yeah. I was like I assumed it was mother daughter, but uh, you know uh, which you know, uh, do you know that's the thing you always like, you know, the, the joke when you're trying to like you know like try, try and impress and like a girl's mother like, oh you could be sisters I, I thought you were sisters you're not our mother this is almost the opposite of that where you think they're mother daughter and then you have to yeah. feel bad you're like oh I'm sorry I'm sorry yeah <laughs> did, did they have like both the same parents or is it just like, are, are they you know, half I have no siblings? idea I have no idea I, I, I never looked into it. I never yeah. investigated <laughs> just, no fair enough but you know they're sisters um, and obviously she's in the Conjuring movie so this is a kind of family tie that she's in yes. this one uh, this one is definitely giving me more. Obviously, there's a more religious bent, given that it's about a nun, and all the other characters seem to be either nuns or priests or characters of that nature. Uh, and we're in more kind of monastery locations and that kind of thing, and you know, a lot of stone walls, uh, sort of dark corridors, uh, and these types of yeah. places. I have to be honest, that type of horror appeals to me. Um, I'm hit or miss. It doesn't appeal to me inherently, but it doesn't put me off either. It can kind of go either yeah. way. There's not a whole lot in this trailer. Um, there's a scare at the end that does feel very Conjuring esque. It does, yeah. Um, where we see like a nun lit shaped figure following her from behind down this this hallway, yeah. and then as she turns and sees it, the actual nun, the the creepy nun of the ti- the titular nun, if you will, yes, uh, jumps out from the side. It it is a nice misdirect, right? Yeah, it's it's a proper Conjuring misdirect. Yeah. And it, it does just come out of nowhere. And, you know, it's it's this very quiet moment. I will say, I will critique, it does have the big loud noise when she comes flying out. It does. I don't know if that's just for the trailer. Well, to be fair, Conjuring's always had that. That's not going to be new for this. No, no, that's true. But it still is worth just mentioning. Con- Conjuring's made kind of a... It made the loud noise thing kind of kind of its own through its own films, where, where it's, it's kind of different to what uh, typical music cues do. Yeah. Um, it's it's almost more insane. It's, it sounds more kind of an insanity in, yeah. in the in the music, which you know, as much as I don't like the loud things to tell me when to laugh, um, they they do they do kind of use it to good effect with with these. But no, at least no with Conjuring one and two, at least, um, you know, because Annabelle was such garbage, 
I can't not be kind of like skeptical Cautious, yeah. about this. So I'm saying I'm, I'm a little confused by the start of this trailer because it comes at the start saying make sure you watch to the end. I was like, I thought they were telling me, oh, there's going to be something, you know, after the the title. Oh yeah, comes okay. Up, with the way they put that up, and there's not. I'm like, oh. Why else would you say that? What that tells me is you're not confident in the first half of this trailer and you think people are going to turn it off. No, 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 you're misreading that. I this am? is because No, this is because the first five seconds will play uh, as a YouTube ad and they can then they can skip it. So that, that's I think that's their way of trying to, like, you know, tempt people into watching the whole thing because mm, there's, okay. there's a thing at the end. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, because they, they all double as just the ads on YouTube now, all these trailers. That's why a lot of them have those little five-second, like, quick cut bits at the start. No, it's true, but that, that's the point. This one doesn't have that. No, it doesn't, no. No, it's its very much a, a traditional trailer in that sense, without that, that bonus bit at the start. But I, I think it still probably doubles as that. That'd be my guess. Uh, okay, no, that makes sense to me. Because uh, when I that came up... I, I don't think that'll be in the theatres when you see the trailer, is that, that bit at the start. No, that, makes sense. Uh, that does make more sense. Because I saw that and I, I, I thought they were going to go, oh, you know, something's coming up after the, the title, so don't just turn it off yeah. when you get to the title. And then there wasn't anything. It was really weird. Yeah, uh, the trailer's not bad though. The trailer, you know, looks like a solid, you know, haunting style movie with a ghost. In this case it is does. none. It's not like the. It doesn't look like the best movie ever, but it looks solid at least. There's no warning signs for me at least. Uh, it's a very short trailer. It's kind of to the point. Yeah. So hopefully it works out. Hopefully we get something that uh, fits into the Conjuring movies. Um, at least with this one, because the big problem with Annabelle was that you expected a creepy doll movie and instead you just got a generic demon movie. The doll just happened to be there. There was no actual creepy doll antics. Whereas right, with the you're nun, not expecting anything else yeah, in this. With the nun, I'm expecting a lot. Because let's be honest, the silhouette of the nun in the background and like coming to you know, that's creepy. As long as it gives us a lot of that, it kind of fulfills its promise, right? Yeah. It's just a case of is it well directed and is the plot you know worth the, the journey? Um, yeah. And we'll find out. So... Um, but you know, um, so that looks okay. It looks okay. It does. And, it's, it's solid enough as a teaser trailer. And speaking of horror, horror sequels and, and whatnot, uh, we also have a trailer here for Unfriended Dark Web, um, which is a sequel to Unfriended, of course. And you know, we were both pleasantly surprised with the first one, outside of maybe like the last five seconds, which, which did the cheap scare at the end. It was a really solid, well-written film, and neither of us wanted any sequels or any like movies mimicking it. Um, but we did hear that this one was getting good buzz when they announced it. Yeah. Or when they, sh- they showed it at festivals, rather. Not when they announced it. Uh, when they yeah. showed it at festivals. Uh, Which is so, basically the same time, right? Because they only announced it like they, they kept that a couple secret. of weeks before. Yes. And they gave it, and they told us, you know, they, they tried to hide that it was an unfriended movie, if I recall. Yes. But they kept that secret. And then they, they announced it. And. I, I, the first thing I'll say about this, which takes place, is similar to the first one, and it's all the, the, the computer screen. Uh, it's the Skype call with the friends. Uh, I do like the twist on the plot, that this time someone found this laptop. and It's not like a supernatural thing. Yeah, I mean, they may, it may veer into supernatural in a way t- later on, but at the very least, to begin with, it's no. This laptop has lots of like footage of someone who's like abducted people, and then eventually when the person comes into the Skype call... It's like you took my laptop. I want it, but you know, and they have a reason to be scared. It's a bit different, right, to the first one. Yeah. So I, I appreciate that. Um, I will say, I think this trailer showed far too much. I feel like this I, is an atrocious trailer on that level. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I saw far too many of the big scares. I saw most of them die. <laughs> <laughs> I can, t- I can point. It's, it's those two. Those are the last two alive. <laughs> That, that, these are fair complaints. They showed far too much. I feel like they could have ended as soon as as soon as the person popped up in Skype and said, "You got, you've got my laptop." That's where you cut to the title. You don't need any more. Yeah, I will say I cringed when it popped up. Would we want to play a game? Can you survive? I'm mm. like, oh no. That was a bit cheesy. Yeah, no, I'll give you that. But you know, and it, it got to the one where they, they they started showing me the first one being killed. Yes. And I'm like, why are you showing me this? This is weird. But I was like, uh, uh, okay. Show me one, right? Don't show me the rest. Well, like, okay, fine. She, she's the first to go, whatever. Because uh, I'm going, oh, that's probably early on in the movie. Yes. And then it keeps going and shows me, like, all of them. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing here? This is not how you make someone want to go and see a movie. Basically, I've seen the movie now. What I'd recommend for you if you're going to watch the trailer is watch up until the person comes on Skype and says, you've got my laptop, and stop it there. Because that's a good tease. 
It's like, oh, they're going to like start playing games with them. Excellent, right? Yeah. They've stumbled onto some weird underground, uh, you know, trafficking, and the, you know, it's, it's the people who who are coming after them. That's the. I like that plot idea. That's a fun. That's a fun dark plot idea. Um, yeah. it, and I don't think the the dialogue is as strong as what I recall from the first one. Immediately, like, oh, the the what were the the, the dark nets? All the bad guys. Yes. Yes. Um. Uh, I mean, I, I I could probably love with some cheesy dialogue if the if the if the plot works for me, but yeah. um, I don't know. Like, given that I I was dreading a sequel to the first one because okay, we've done it once. I don't necessarily think it can work again. I do think the premise of this can actually work. Yeah. It's, it's just a question if the because to be fair, whenever they showed the the scary kills, right? Uh, the one at the end, I'm thinking specifically. I thought, okay, that looked effective. I mean, obviously we're seeing it cut up, but. I can yeah. imagine that being effective in the movie itself. Well, that's true. So I, I will say, just as a, a negative from the first one, what I liked about that was just how much was just on the computer and how limited and how they were to work around that. Oh, sure. Whereas here it feels like, oh, we're just going to tap into all these camera feeds all over anyway so we can see all this other stuff. So you might as well be outside looking at it. Yeah. It feels less unique as oh, this is just the computer programs that we've got when you're into all the cameras in the city. I mean, to play the devil's advocate, I mean, I guess that's how you make it feel like it's expanding from the first movie. Is you? It's kind of like how the second paranormal activity had multiple cameras in the house as opposed to just the one. That, that was that was how they expanded it. Uh, I get it. that, but I feel like it loses some of the the point of of being on the computer screen. Whereas I'm like, well, why am I not just watching? Why, why does this have to be on a computer screen now? Why am I not just looking at it? Yeah. Yes. It, it, it does it does lose a little bit for me on that. Do you know what I would do for the third one? I'd have the computer we're watching be the person who's messing with the group, not what not the person who's on the call to begin with, right? Not the, not one of the main characters. You ha- you're watching the screen of the person who is mm. messing with them, and you follow what they're doing from that perspective. That could be fun. That's how you do the third one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take my check in the mail. Thank you, Blumhouse. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think it's, I think it's a very bad trailer, but I'll still check out the movie. You know, it's got on some good buzz. I yeah. like the first one. And the same thing. I think it's a fine trailer until it just keeps going and starts showing everything. Yeah. Like it's fine up until that point when it when it does go up to that tease. You know, I went, oh, that's a good idea. You know, he's in the Skype call. You've taken my laptop. That's good. And then it just kept going and yeah. going and showing me more and more stuff. And I'm like, I don't need to see all this. Yeah, just just stop while you're ahead. Yeah, it was it was weird. Uh, so it's it's you had me, and now I'm like, why? Poor trailer, big, much like the nun. I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah, which is weird. You know, going into that first one, I was like, this can't possibly be good. Yeah, but the first one ended up being really good. So, um, yeah. you know, barring one or two small complaints. So, um, hey, uh, so next trailer we have is a film called Brain on Fire. Uh, this is Chloe Grace Moretz in this. This was actually completed a couple of years ago, um, and it's been released in a few Asian countries, but everywhere else is just getting it soon. <laughs> so here we are. This is this is Netflix. This is Netflix. Re- this one, which is why it's soon. Uh, this is based on a true story, and she plays a a young woman who you know has got her dream job. She's like an intern at like your her, her paper, or whatever that she's dreamed of getting. She's got a boyfriend. She's got everything she wants. And then out of nowhere, she starts getting really sick and getting dizzy and disorientated. She can barely walk. She's having like, uh, an- well, not aneurysms, but <laughs> it's a bit extreme. No, a- aneurysms, she'd be dropping yes. dead. Yes, yes, extreme headaches, we'll say. Um, migraines. Migraines, there you go. And she, but they go to the doctors and physically there's nothing wrong with her. They, they, you know, MRIs are coming up clean, blood work's coming up clean, everything's coming up clean. Um, and then they basically send her to the Shadow King. Uh, to to get checked out because he might know what's going on. That's a joke because they act. The, eventually, they send her to a special hospital, and the doctor's played by the guy who plays Farouk on this season of Legion. Uh, if you didn't get that joke, but uh, I, I, I mean, like, it got me when he popped up. Yeah, because he sounds the same. Oh, he's evil. He's up to no good. Don't trust. <laughs> I don't him. trust his voice anymore. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's a story. It's a, you know, it's one of these like sort of a tearjerker tearjerkers where she's getting ill and ill and don't know what's wrong with her. Um, and I have no idea how it ends. Like I have no idea if if the, the the true story is that she got better and she sort of figured it out, or if they eventually found something that was undetectable in every other way. Yeah, who knows? I mean, I could probably Google it, but that defeat the point, right? Do you care enough to Google it as well? That's a no, good question. No, I don't. Did you like the trailer? It, Do you like the look of the film? 
I, I think it's a perfectly fine trailer. It's a very competent trailer, but the film's not for me. Right. Yeah, that's fair. I, I don't think it looks like a bad movie, though. I think it's perfectly fine at what it's doing. I just don't I mean, care about that. I think it goes a little bit too sappy by the time it gets to the end. That's fair. It's playing it up a bit much. Yes. So I, I would critique that. And maybe that's not a fault of the trailers. That's just what the movie is, so fair enough. But yeah. um, it's, in, in terms of turning me off the movie, it, it succeeded in doing that. Yeah. And, you know, it's getting weird. You know, Netflix are announcing these movies later and later, I swear, because this is out <laughs> next week. Jeez. Right. Yeah, this there is out the, the 22nd. Obviously, we're recording this on you know, Friday the 15th. So this is a, a, a week away. Why not? You know, Shadow dropped these things. Why not? Yeah. That's the thing. Just, you know, whatever. Uh, so one last trailer this week. Yeah, only only, only six. Uh, how nice is this? Uh, it's called Enrang, and this is a Korean film. Now... The trailer that we have for you does not have English subtitles, so if you find one with English subtitles, by all means link it to us, because I'd be curious to see what they're actually saying. But I thought this was worth mentioning, um, partly because the visuals are interesting enough to just talk about that. Uh, secondly, it is directed by Kim Ji-Woon, who directed I Saw the Devil, which is a fantastic film. Mm. So, this is some pedigree behind it. Uh, it's also worth mentioning, this is the live-action remake of Jinro, The Wolf Brigade. So, I don't know if that's... Uh, uh, an anime of some sort. Yeah, I assume it's an animated film that's based on, but I mean, uh, yes. so hey. So basically, you see, it's an action movie, and what's notable is that, and the visuals that I wanted to mention, and why I thought this was worth putting in here, is that the, the main character gets like a sort of almost like mech, not, well, not mech, it's like an exosuit. He has, has armor. Very, I tell you, what, if, if you're familiar with, with games, it's very kill zone. Ah, there you go. It's the, the look of it. Yes, and it's a really cool. Like, see when he first puts that on the visual of him walking down like the alleyway, with the it's gorgeous. Isn't yeah, it? it's a really pretty shot. Um, yeah. So the action looks great, and the director's good. I can't tell what they're saying to each other. And no, there, <laughs> there's a little synopsis underneath, just for oh, a bit more context. Go on. Um, yeah, based on an original Japanese animation from '99, uh, Japan after World War II was suffering from chaos and confusion from being defeated. However, a special force was created to suppress the anti-government forces. So it's it's a bit political, all the action stuff that's going on. Okay, all right. Um, actually, having it set in that time period makes me interested in like because it makes the suit a bit more steampunky because it's like you know it's like it feels more advanced than they should have at that. Time yeah, period. I, I think this, I don't think it is set at that time. I think oh, okay. it was more the because you know it's all modern cars driving around. You're right. You're right. I remember that. The trailer. I think it was more that's when this force this this uh you know the, these soldiers came into uh, as a concept came into being mm. and this is them you know 50 years later or whatever you know wh wh however long it, it was since it was formed you know i don't know if it was directly after world war ii you know a little bit of time later but this is now and this is their legacy and and what they are these days yeah oh, it's interesting um but, but no, visually it looks stunning I, I highly, it's a short trailer check it out um if you find english subtitles for it then do yeah. let us know. They could, it, it they, is, they, yeah. they could be added to this trailer that we've linked, actually, at some point. There's, they weren't there at the time I'm watching, though. So. Yeah, but it is gorgeous just to watch it as well. Like, yeah. you, so you get something out of it, you know, even just on this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so good director, though, which is why I really felt the need, you know, combine that with the, 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 the suit of armour that he's got, that he's sporting. Uh, but that is the last trailer, which means it is now time to pick our favourite trailer of the week. Interesting week for this, because yeah. last week we had so many good options to pick from. This week it's a bit more limited, um, and I, I guess honestly, if I'm picking one, I think I have to go with the nun. Okay. I think I might actually go with Inrang. I think that's the one that. Oh, okay. That that you know, all, all the others, I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll probably watch it. It could be all right. That one, I'm like. No, I want to watch this movie. I, I hope this gets a, a reasonable release. That's that's fair. I, I feel like the the reason why I, I don't want to go with Enrang is because I don't know what they're saying, so I can't really judge it as a as a trailer properly. No, that's fair. But uh, you know, uh, the, a trailer's job is to make you want to watch a film, right? It's to make you excited sure, for a movie. Sure. And Inring is the one that succeeded in that most. Like that's the one where I've gone. Oh, I want to watch this now. Admittedly, it's the one I'm most excited about as a movie. Yeah, that's for sure. And then you've got the two horror movies, and then I don't really care about the other three. <laughs> so, um, I think I think Unfriended is probably the worst trailer. That that's fair. Yeah, that was never a content. Even though I want to see that more than like three of the other movies, it's not the, the trailers. 
it's just, it's a bad trailer. Yeah, it just it shows far too much. Yeah. Uh, but here we are. So there you go. There you go. The, those are picks, and that that concludes this week's trailer talk. So by all means, let us know what your favorite of these trailers are in in the comments. What your thoughts are, are on each of them. Um, if you want to support the channel, head over to patreoncom slash TV. Uh, there's a bunch of bonuses over there, uh, including voting for some of the movie reviews we do. One point twenty one extra is like a new uh, once a month discussion show that we'll have about movies. Uh, the first episode of that's coming up later this month. You can look forward to that if you want to go over there. Uh, but otherwise, you can support us as well by liking, subscribing. All the usual stuff. Um, get us on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. Uh, if you watch, uh, I've already said the last part. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and of, of course, if, you, if you're into this, come back for the the full news video later in the weekend. Yes, yes, yes. Movie movie news. We're talking about all the news items. Um, is coming up tomorrow. Um, so you can look forward to that as well. Uh, this used to be part of that news show, but we separated it because it works kind of as its own little format. And it, it, if it was a big week, it would extend the length of the news show to obscene amounts. So now it's its own separate little show. And even with six trailers, we're over twenty five minutes. So you know, it's a nice little yeah. thing to watch. So here we are. But that's us. So thank you very much for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching movies, guys, and we'll see you next time.